Hello everyone. Welcome to that issue. Today we are back with our lectures. But today we will discuss some important topics and questions of human error. And this will be our part two. In our previous part, we have already discussed some important topics like scalp, posterior triangle, extraocular muscles, cavernous sinus, and so on. So today we will add some important topics to it. You all can ask your doubts and queries in comment section. We will also provide you the PDF of this slide. So without wasting much time, let's begin. Our very first topic will be on the carotid triangle. In our first part, we have already discussed the importance of posterior triangle. In our second part, we will discuss uh, the next triangle that is being asked in our profs and terminals, that is the carotid triangle. In carotid triangle, you will definitely give the introduction, the boundaries, contents, and the clinical features. In the boundaries and content, we can add these two diagrams. Please mark this topic as an important one. It can come in your long way. Moving ahead, we have the submandibular gland. In our previous part, we have already discussed the parotid gland, and in this part, we will discuss the submandibular glands and the thyroid gland. So we have the three main important glands, that is the parotid gland, submandibular gland, and thyroid gland, which are asked in your terminals and troughs. So in submandibular gland, what are the topics we will, will include? That is obviously the introductory part, the capsules, relations, which will include the inferior surface, lateral surface, and the deep surface, the nerve supply, the submandibular duct, and lastly, obviously, the clinical anatomy. I've already taught you how to write and how to draw the diagrams of these topics. So these are the diagrams you should use in the topic of submandibular gland. Firstly, it is the superficial layer or the superficial surface, the lateral surface, and in our next part, we have the deep relation. Superficial relation, lateral surface relation, and deep surface relation. These three diagrams should be included in your answer. Okay? And yes, look at this part. The way it is being labeled, you should label in such manner. There is no need of writing pages after pages. Just in diagram, you can add your main points and main topics. Moving ahead, we have the temporomandibular joint or the TMJ. It is one of the most important or most frequently asked long note question. So please go through this topic. So what are the topics we will include? The introductory part, the articular disc, ligaments, relation, nerve and blood supply, movements, and lastly, the clinical part. In the articular disc, we can draw this diagram where you can show the anterior band, anterior extensions, the posterior band, posterior extensions. Okay, these are the muscles and this is the arterial disc. Okay, this is the diagram of relation part and yes, Separately, in short, it can be asked about the ligaments of TMG. Okay, ligaments of TMG, there are basically four major ligaments. What are they? They are the fibrous, where it is? Yes, they are the fibrous capsule, the lateral ligament, sphenomandibular ligament, and lastly, the stylomandibular ligament. Yes, please note it. Let me listen first. Please note it. The diagram of sphenomandibular ligament will arise from this part. Okay. There's a mistake in this book. So please correct it. Or it should be. Okay. Please correct this in your book. It will help you. Moving ahead. This is the movement of TMJ, an important part. In muscle investigation, you will get a chart where you will get uh, different muscles helping in different movements of TMJ. You can also add that chart in your TMJ answers. Okay, I'll show you that chart in our further slides. But 
Yes, I'm just suggesting you that you can add that chart in the TMJ answer. Next, we have the muscles of mastication. Muscles of mastication can come as short note as well as your 10 marks long note. If it comes in short note, mostly the lateral pterygoid muscle is being asked for your short note. But if it comes in long note, you have to write all the four muscles. Okay, the temporalis muscle, masseter, lateral pterygoid, and medial pterygoid. So, what are the topics we will add in this top in this uh, muscles? They are the origin, insertion, nerve supply, and action. Nerve supply, artery supply, and action. Okay, again, the origin, insertion. Let me write it. Firstly, we will write the origin. Next is the insertion, the nerve supply, arterial supply, and lastly is the action. Okay, like which muscle helps in uh, opening of mouth, closing of mouth, protrusion, depression, retraction side by side movement okay moving ahead in the diagram itself we can show the origin and the insertion of these muscles okay in the diagram itself there's no need to write separately you can write in the diagram itself the origin and the insertion part whereas the nerve supply and arterial supply you can write point wise lastly the action you can draw the chart which i already mentioned Moving forward, we have the lateral and middle pterygoid muscles. Please learn the lateral pterygoid muscle by heart properly because in short note, as I already said, it can be asked. Next is the movement. In movement, along with the chart, you can draw this diagram. Next, we have the ganglions. Ganglions mostly come as a short note. Like most frequently asked ganglions are the OT ganglion and the pterygopalatine ganglion. Some mandibular ganglion is not so important, but OT and pterygopalatine ganglion is the most important ones. Okay. So in OT ganglion, what are the things you should mention? Not only in OT ganglion, in other ganglions also, you should mention the introductory part, its location, relation, and its roots. Okay, roots and the branches, whatever it is. So, what are the points? Number one, it's introduction. It's locations. Relations. And lastly, it's branches or roots. Okay. Not only in OT ganglion, but also in pterygopalatine ganglion. So, this is the diagram you should include in your answer. And this is the diagram for the pterygopalatine ganglia. This mostly comes in a short note, not in long. So prepare your answer according to your marks. Next, we have the thyroid gland. I already mentioned this while uh, explaining you the submandibular gland. In thyroid gland also, same as submandibular gland, we will give the introductory part, its capsule, its relation, the nerve supply, arterial supply, and the venous drainage. This is the venous drainage, it is the arterial supply. Okay. External carotid artery, superior thyroid artery, anterior branch of posterior branch, thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery. Just the name and this diagram is sufficient to give you marks. Next, we have the tongue. Development of tongue is the most frequently asked question from this topic. However, development of tongue, I have given a separate video on it. Please, you can go through the, uh, that video. Apart from this, in tongue, you can be asked about the nerve supply of tongue. Along with the development, you can be asked about the nerve supply. So, moving directly into it. Before that, here we, what we are seeing here, it is the muscles. The extrinsic muscles and the intrinsic muscles, there are two main types of muscles found on tongue. They are the extrinsic muscles and the intrinsic muscles. 
in extrinsic muscles you can be asked about the origin and insertion sometimes you can also be asked what its actions like what is the purpose of these muscles like in extrinsic muscles we have the four major muscles genoglossus hyoglossus styloglossus and paratoglossus so first is the genoglossus hyoglossus styloglossus and paratoglossus its origin and insertion you can uh, go through this chart it is from vishram singh you can go through this chart similarly we have the chart for intrinsic muscles where the muscles included are the superior longitudinal muscles inferior longitudinal muscle transverse muscle and vertical muscles okay so four is extrinsic muscles and four intrinsic muscles are present on tongue apart from this we have the nerve supply which is the most important part after the development of tongue so the most frequently asked question is write in short about the development of tongue and its nerve supply where you will write definitely a short introductory part regarding tongue you will describe its development and lastly you will show this diagram okay where you will mention the motor supply and the sensory nerve supply of tongue moving ahead we have the muscles of pharynx in pharynx and soft palate the most frequently asked portion is the muscles the constrictor muscles and the longitudinal muscles there are two major types of muscles found on pharynx they are the constrictor muscles and the longitudinal muscles in constrictor muscles same like that in the muscles of tongue we have the origin insertion nerve supply and lastly the action so go through this chart properly same as that for the longitudinal muscles okay so moving ahead we have the muscles of soft palate it can also be asked in your viva during your practicals so please by heart it properly next we have the palatine tonsil in tonsil the most frequently asked part is the palatine tonsil where the topics must be included in your answers is your introductory part the boundaries tonsillar bed medial lateral and the deep surfaces its arterial supply and lastly the clinical features yes please note it guys from your clinical features short note can come okay so clinical features are certain important topics we have certain important topics in our clinical features which can be asked separately in your short notes so these are the diagrams the medial lateral surfaces the deep surfaces the arteries all this diagram you can get from vishram singh it is directly being derived from vishram singh next we have the middle ear an important shot okay we have the shape and size communications contains subdivisions boundaries and the clinical features and this is the diagram we can add nothing this is a short note a long note can never arise from middle ear so prepare your answer according to the marks give this important topics important points and write two to three lines regarding it that's more than enough for you moving ahead we have the nerves from the nerves the most important nerves that can be asked are hypoglossal nerve glossopharyngeal nerve we have the facial nerve from trigeminal nerve we have the mandibular nerve and sometimes a short note on cauda tympani okay hypoglossal glossopharyngeal and facial can come as a long note or short note mandibular nerve and cauda tympani will always come as short note okay so hypoglossal glossopharyngeal and facial nerve will come as long note or sometimes a short note but the mandibular nerve and cauda tympani will always come as short nerve clear so what are the topics that should be there in your answer definitely the introductory parts its functional component always try to write the functional component in chart form its gse gsa components next comes the course and relation 
the branches and distribution and lastly the clinical features see this is the branches and distribution diagram that you should draw practice it as many times as possible because in your exam you will not get enough time to draw it uh, like you will think and you will draw you will not get enough time for it next is the glossopharyngeal nerve as i already said we have the facial nerve its branches and distribution the mandibular nerve same in whatever nerves you will have you will write this topics the mandibular nerve branches its diagram cord and tympani where i have shown you its course and relation functional components and the branches okay lastly we have the valvular ring it is also present in your clinical features that can arise or come as short known what is valvular ring it is an aggregation of lymphoid tissue underneath the epithelial lining of pharyngeal wall called tonsils which surround the commencement of ear and foot passages the ring is basically formed by the pharyngeal tonsil posterior superiorly the tubal and palatine tonsil laterally and the lingual tonsil anterior okay so these are the two diagrams that you should draw in your answer of world diary so that's it for today these are some important topic that can come from a head and neck part in our part 3 we will discuss some important topics from embryology and uh, certain further important if i get some important more important topics i definitely include in your part 3 so keep learning and keep supporting our channel at this point thank you